as I venture to understand what it means to have an abode, what it means to be comfortable in life, I often find myself coming back to a very simple chapter on houses. The Prophet by Khalil Gibran has been my spiritual guiding text for a lot of the little things and sometimes the movements of life. My name's Tarab. I make videos about emotional intelligence every day. My mission? To inspire you to become the person you want to be. Hopefully, to affect the world in the way that you want. On houses. Then a mason came forth and said, Speak to us of houses. And he answered and said, This is Al Mustafa, by the way. He is leaving on his voyage from the city of Orphalese in order to further his understanding of the universe and life. In his observations of the people of Orphalese, he has come to these conclusions. Build of your imaginings a burrow in the wilderness ere you build a house within the city walls. For even as you have homecomings in your twilight, so has the wanderer in you, the ever distant and alone. Your house is your larger body. It grows in the sun and sleeps in the stillness of the night. And it is not dreamless. Does not your house dream? And dreaming, leave the city for grove or hilltop. Would that I could gather your homes into my hand and like a sower scatter them in forest and meadow. Would the valleys were your streets and the green paths your alleys, that you might seek one another through vineyards and come with the fragrance of the earth in your garments. But these things are not yet to be. In their fear, your forefathers gathered you too near together, and that fear shall endure a little longer. A little longer shall your city walls separate your hearts from your fields. And tell me, people of Orphalese, what have you in these houses? And what is it that you guard with fastened doors? Have you peace, the quiet urge that reveals your power? Have you remembrance, the glimmering arches that span the summits of, your, of the mind? Have you beauty that leads the heart from things fashioned of wood and stone to the holy mountains? And tell me, have you these in your houses? Or have you only comfort and the lust for comfort? That stealthy thing that enters your house a guest and becomes a host and a master. Aye, it becomes a tamer and with the hook and scourge makes puppets of your larger desires. Though its hands are silken, its heart is of iron. It lulls you to sleep only to stand by your bed and jeer the dignity of the flesh. It makes mock of your sound senses and lays them in thistle down like fragrant vessels, fragile vessels. Verily, the lust for comfort murders the passion of the soul and then walks grinning in the funeral. But you, children of space, you yet restless in rest, you shall not be trapped nor tamed. Your house shall not be an anchor, but a mast. It shall not be a glistening film that covers a wound, but an eyelid that guards the eye. You shall not fold your wings that you may pass through doors or bend your head that you may strike not against the ceiling, nor fear to breathe lest walls should crack and fall down. You shall not dwell in tombs made by the dead for the living. And though of magnificence and splendor, your house shall not hold your secret nor shelter your longing. For that which is boundless in you abides in the masons of the sky, whose door is the morning mist and whose windows are the songs and the silences of night. I will read some of these over for my own comprehension and hopefully for a bit of discussion. 
And what is it that you guard with fashioned doors? Have you peace, the quiet urge that reveals your power? Have you remembrances, the glimmering arches that span the summits of your mind? Have you beauty that leads the heart from things fashioned of wood and stone to the holy mountain? Have you beauty that leads the heart from things fashioned of wood and stone to the holy mountain? Tell me, have you these in your home? But you, children of space, you restless in rest, you shall not be trapped or tamed. Your house shall not be an anchor, but a mast. It shall not be a glistening film that covers a wound, but an eyelid that guards your eye. You shall not fold your wings that you may pass through doors, nor bend your head that they strike not against the ceiling, nor fear to breathe lest walls should crack and fall down. You shall not dwell in tombs made by the dead for the living, and though of magnificence and splendor, your house shall not hold your secret, nor shelter your longing. For that which is boundless in you abides in the masons of the sky, whose door is the morning mist, and whose windows are the songs and the silences of night. I think what he's trying to say here is... Obviously the comfort component is very important to, to realize that when we're basking in something... That, that causes us to not think when we're basking in idleness almost. That it's not particularly good for our soul's development. That peace does not necessarily mean lack of movement or at least lack of purpose. That's the comfort component. Now the other component is that I think a lot of us spend a lot of time trying to craft the ideal place we want to live. Sometimes we craft the ideal place that we want to live based on foundations that we don't necessarily agree on to begin with. For instance, things that are passed down for generations. For instance, dreams of our parents and we try to erect our houses in a way that helps maintain those philosophies and I think that's kind of what he's talking about I, mean, I might be completely off base but I don't believe in coincidence and something that I've been thinking about recently too being um, the son of a widowed mother it's very easy for me to believe that the right thing to do is to shelter those philosophies, to shelter the beliefs that you must have a house, to have to throw parties, to have family dwell in, to feel like you have some sort of status in society. And really, when I think deeply about my soul, when I think deeply about perhaps the places that I want to dwell in life, I don't imagine myself having one place. I imagine myself having lots of different places, perhaps all over the world, but certainly more often in nature than in suburban neighborhoods. And that's because I like the peace. And that's because I like the sentiment of having the fragrance of nature, I suppose, infused with the way that I look at the world. Now, that might be a selfish way to go about it, but I do believe that the majority of human beings would benefit more from being surrounded by nature and perhaps being a little bit further away from one another if they can afford it, if they're not necessarily reliant on their neighbor for resources or goods or training or socializing. Anyway, I think it's very important to know 
especially when we're in our 20s, that these things are all transient. That our skill set, our career, our location geographically, we need to know that they're allowed to change. And that the reason we need to know that is because it allows our dreamers, the deeper self in us, to have the freedom to grow, the freedom to expand where perhaps life will take us based on our visions, based on our ideologies, whatever it is. I believe what Gibran is trying to tell us is do not be slaves to your own comfort. Do not be slaves to the houses that we have. Allow your wings to expand. Do not hunch. That tradition is powerful, sure. But a lot of it is sometimes built on petty, petty grievances, trifling matters. I have made the assumption for many years that older people are wiser than me. And in that assumption, I often took judgments and advice from, from older people based on essentially their age. Upon accumulating a large amount of friends that are older than me, I realized that it has little to do with age, wisdom, but it has more to do with whether or not we are lifelong learners in the sense that if someone gets out of school and stops trying to improve themselves and stops trying to further understand life in a deeper way then just by virtue of accumulating years they are not growing wiser in fact life necessarily needs to constantly be giving us lessons to grow wiser. It needs to constantly be giving us things to think about, places to pivot, new horizons, new achievements to conquer. That, I believe, is accruing wisdom. And that could be done in a myriad of different ways. You know, having children, having those different philosophies, going, making them go through the social system, creating a business, creating a vision, a purpose that we pursue, and through that, meeting different people, not coming across different challenges. But I think it's a cautionary tale, this one on houses in particular, whereas a lot of Gibran's chapters tend to be more outward, more expansive, this one is very cautionary. Coming from Mustafa, the seafaring soul, who is about to set on a voyage, obviously, houses are not necessarily held in high esteem. Otherwise, how could you rationalize leaving to the ocean? Anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, this is the last chapter I did on the Prophet. Check it out. Actualize your potential catalyst. This world needs you. Take care.